Hello, this is going to be a video on uh, computer networking basics, uh, dealing with the hardware, or more to the point, looking at the hardware that is used for uh, connecting to a network. Um, so, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation. Let's begin. So, as I said, this network, this uh, video will be on uh, computer networking uh, basics. As, as far as hardware is concerned. As mentioned previously in another presentation, uh, computer networks are made up of two or more computers that are used to communicate with each other and share resources. Resources meaning printers, files, folders, applications, hard drives, what have you. Okay, so in this uh, presentation or tutorial, we will be going over the hardware that is needed uh, the, or that is used for making up a network. Okay, so it doesn't really matter in what order we start, but um, we got to start somewhere. So uh, let's start with the router. A router is a device that is used to manage and track a network through its IP addresses. IP meaning internet protocol. Okay, that's a, a simple way of just uh, of looking at it. But basically, it's true. Any device, uh, whether it be a computer, printer, laptop, tablet, or even a cell phone, if it wants to get onto a network, it needs an IP address. Okay, an outer. Uh, I'm sorry, a router acts as a hardware firewall. Meaning it decides which uh, which devices are, are allowed onto the network or cannot get into the network, and it usually tracks those devices through an IP address. Okay, uh, the way it does that can get complicated. You can have what they what is known as ACLs or um, uh, 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 active control lists or uh, some type of uh, uh, firewall that can be used for uh, tracking unauthorized and authorized devices that uh, can get onto the network. Okay, so on the next page we will look at some of the routers and what they look like. Now there are many different types of routers. Okay, they all have some basic, uh, some basic things in common they all have a power device or a, a power port to connect your power to. Um, most of them have some cell, some sort of reset button and uh, most of them have an internet port where you plug the router into and then most of them have uh, LAN ports or Ethernet ports and they'll be numbered. These, these, this one has uh, only four ports so it's numbered one through four one, two, three, and four. Um, and this is what you're going to connect your uh, commute computer to. And this port right here is what you're going to connect your, your modem to. All right. So uh, as you can see from here, we have some Cisco routers. Cisco is a big name in networking, both in uh, commercial side with uh, companies and uh, enterprise uh, situations and also with uh, home networking. Uh, they also uh, have uh, uh, the home version called Linksys, Linksys routers, L-I-N-K-S-Y-S. And so as we were stating before, all routers, whether they are wired wi or wireless, or built for home or company and enterprise use mostly work the same way. Some are a little bit more complicated than others but they all perform basically the same function. In order to get online and surf the web almost all routers are connected to some type of modem. It doesn't really matter what type of modem whether it's DSL or cable uh, but they do need to connect to a modem or some type of device to get them online. And as you can see on this page, this is a cable modem, okay? And if you look at the front of it, it'll show the lights, the LEDs, you got the power light, the cable light, the PC light, 
that's for when you're connected to your computer and then you have your data light that's when you have data going through the from the cable modem to the uh, your router and then from your router to your computer or vice versa and getting out onto the internet usually your data will blink when you have data going through it when you got a connection and you're getting onto the internet or through your network and this is something it seems to be unique to this type of router which is appears is a Terion um, is a test light uh, I got, that's used for testing the connection of the modem I would imagine and then as you look at the back of the modem you'll see this right here uh, this is a connection for the uh, coax cable that comes out of the wall into your modem that feeds you the that feeds the signal to get out online um, then you have the port for the power cord you just plug the power cord in there and then from your computer you'll either ho be hooked up through US USB connection or an Ethernet connection one or the other or it's possibly that you could be connected wirelessly uh, but that'll be through the router not the modem unless it's a modem router combination this right here is a DSL modem um, it's a little bit different from the cable modem but it works the same way uh, you got your uh, Ethernet port switcher down here this right here is your Ethernet cable this right here is your phone cable as you can see the eth well you probably can't see it from here but most people have seen a phone cable and a few others uh, have seen an Ethernet cable they look almost the same except the Ethernet cable is a little bigger this connection at the end of the Ethernet cable is known as an RJ45 and the connection at the end of the telephone cable is known as an RJ11 RJ11 is for the telephone RJ45 is for the computer so no matter if it's a DSL modem cable modem or even a dial-up analog modem the result is going to be the same you're trying to get online so that you can surf the internet and then from from the router outside you could connect to your uh, computer oh I'm sorry and then from your router side <laughs> I'm reading this too uh, you can't connect to your computer you connect to your router or a switch in some cases either wired or wirelessly if it's wirelessly then it's going to be through the radio waves if it's wired then it's going to be through an ethernet cord or ethernet cable so as you can see from here on your computer side which this happens to be uh, a laptop I believe it looks like my IBM um, as you can see right here this is the ethernet port and this is the ethernet cord with the RJ45 at the end okay and all you do is just connect it to this end okay let's see on the other end you connect to your uh, router uh, let's see the ending result looking similar to what you'll see on the next D uh, next page with the DSL hookup so as you can see with a, with a person that has a DSL line or a DSL uh, connection uh, you have your computer and you have an Ethernet cord that goes from your computer and it connects to the DSL uh, modem or modem router combination it just depends on which one you have at that time and then you got um, uh, a cord coming out of the DSL line uh, usually this is a telephone cord and from that telephone cord which is an RJ11 it goes to a filter and then out of the filter or or I'm sorry it goes to a splitter a phone line splitter and then from the phone line splitter you go to a filter and then from that filter to the telephone and what that filter does is that filters out between the voice signal coming through the telephone line and the uh, IP signal that goes through the uh, the modem to your computer okay and that's just uh, that's just separating the two so that you don't have any uh, uh, bad signal or anything like that so in a similar look uh, let's look at what the cable modem setup looks like that was the DSL modem this is the cable modem 
on page 24. And as you can see, it's basically the same as the DSL, except you don't have a filter. Um, um, so what you have here is you got you, you can connect either one of two connections. You can either connect through USB, or you can connect through Ethernet, and you connect to your modem side, and that's your Ethernet port right there on your um, on your modem, and then there's your USB connection right there. And then you have your uh, coax cable modem or coax cable that you connect to right here. I believe some people in the cable industry uh, call this the tuner. But in either case, you connect that from this end to the wall outlet that has a cable outlet on it too, and you connect to it. And then the final thing is is that you have your uh, you have your um, your electrical cable that you connect this to and uh, that connects to the cable outlet okay so the only thing missing from both from both diagrams was a router which could be easily added and it does not matter if you install if you want to install a wired or wireless router they both do the same thing if, I ha if however you have computers in a separate rooms or separate parts of the house and you don't want to wire them to the router, then you can use a wireless router. Okay, now let's look closer at, uh, at the devices that connect you from your computer to your router, and then finally to the modem. That connects you to your internet, usually through your ISP, known as your internet service provider. Okay, now the devices inside of your computer that connects you uh, connects to your router switch or modem is known as a network interface card or a NIC for short. Uh, a NIC can be either a wired or wireless device, and as we'll see on the next page, this is what they look like. So as you can see right here, you have what is known as a PCI network interface card, and it usually goes to uh, connects to your desktop uh, computer. And the reason why it's called a PCI computer um, uh, acronym stands for uh, Peripheral Component Interconnect. And that's because as you look down at the bottom, if you look at the uh, bottom teeth of this uh, PCI NIC card, it fits into a PCI slot on your desktop computer. Um, and so that's one way of connecting your network interface card to your uh, desktop computer. As a matter of fact, that's what your card will look like. Is looks similar to this and they have different type I mean they have different brands you got uh, uh, 3com you got real tech something like that and as you can see on this next page here this is an Ethernet cord as we were talking about earlier it has an RJ45 at the end of the connection and this is what you would connect to the end of your uh, network interface card And this is the port at the end of that network interface car. That's where you would connect your uh, Ethernet cord into. As mentioned earlier, there are other types of network interface cards. Uh, there are wireless cards. Um, and as you will see on the following pages, this is what the network interface uh, wireless cards look like. So, once again, we have a wireless network interface card, or wireless NIC, and it's a PCI card, because as you can see again at the bottom, these fit into a PCI slot on your desktop computer. But what's, what makes this different from a regular uh, PCI card, network interface card, is, is that it doesn't have an Ethernet port, but it, does, it emits a, a, a radio signal and it does that through this wire or this antenna excuse me and what it does is it emits a, a signal that goes out onto the radio airwaves now if you have a laptop instead of using a PCI wireless NIC card you will use this type of a wireless uh, NIC card this goes into uh, the slot usually the PCMCIA slot of your uh, laptop card and again, it does the same thing as the other card. It emits a radio signal 
through the airwaves. Okay, um, and there are also wireless USB NICs. Uh, those are the easiest to install because all you do is you look for an open uh, USB uh, port and you just install it and then from there you install your drivers. Um, I normally would recommend the USB uh, NIC, wireless NICs, because they're the easiest to install and you can install them on both your uh, desktop and laptop computers. And uh, that's I like using those instead. And as you can see on this page, uh, this these are your wireless USB uh, NICs. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can use either or. I just think that the uh, USB NICs are very uh, convenient. Because like I said, you can use them and you can put them on either your uh, desktop computer or your laptop computer. So the only other device that we have not mentioned that you may or may not see on a computer network is a switch. And a switch is used when you want to connect extra computers on your network. It's basically the same as a router, except with a switch, it tracks those devices not through an IP address, but through the MAC address, which is the hardware address. Um, every network interface card, whether it's wireless or wired, comes with a MAC address and that comes from the manufacturer and for lack of a better term that MAC address is basically the serial it's not the serial number but it's basically uh, a special uh, device that's used to identify that address especially when it gets online. Uh, for further information about MAC addresses you can just Google them. This is what a switch looks like it looks similar to a router okay uh, the only the main difference between a switch and a router like I say is a router tracks uh, devices on the network through an IP address and a switch tracks uh, devices normally through a, uh, the MAC address so to, uh, to look up other information about that you can just google it so taking all the devices mentioned you put them into or you put them together and you get a computer network. There are many computer networks in existence today with different configurations and devices, but the basic concept is always going to be the same. Uh, this tutorial is just a basic, uh, uh, a basic information on uh, how you configure and get onto the network. So taking all that into account, a basic network is made up of, as we said, a router, and possibly a switch or two and some computers and a modem to get online with. So let's look at this next diagram here. So to go ahead and uh, explain basically what happens when you try and get online or get onto the network for that matter. Uh, you take the three white computers that are uh, that are that you see down here you could just say they're typical home users uh, or clients okay and then when they try when they get on their brow when they use their browser and they try and get online okay they're gonna pat they're gonna go to uh, a web server usually they're gonna pass through the web servers um, firewall excuse me this could be the firewall of the web server or it could be the firewall of the clients uh, both and it, as a user you should have a firewall um, as well as a uh, um, web servers will or any server will when you're when the clients are trying to uh, access it but anyway <coughs> this firewall will represent uh, this brick wall will represent a firewall and then as you pass by the firewall you will go to the server which normally is a um, a web server and on the other side as you can see you pass through and you get through the web server okay and there are other servers there there probably is not just one server it can be dozens of servers but you'll go through the main web server and this is where you'll get your data from uh, or this is where you will request your data and if it's a web server you'll request a web page it'll decide whether or not it's gonna uh, serve you the web page usually if there's no username and password uh, involved It'll just go ahead and bring up the web page that you, your browser uh, requested, which is usually the home page of that web server. You know, 
okay? And so you do that, and then um, that's how you that's how you connect to the web server, and then usually you'll have other computers uh, servicing or or maintaining the web server on either side. And this is where the admin and uh, or designated personnel will be uh, logging into to uh, maintain or work with the web server. They may do updates. They may do patches and stuff like that. So this concludes the presentation and the video for uh, networking basics, uh, the hardware. Uh, again, all I was doing was giving you a general idea of, uh, of the hardware and, and the, the devices that you use to get onto a network and uh, uh, get online through your internet service provider. I hope this was a beneficial uh, video. I hope it helped out a lot of people and answered some questions. So. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for seeing this video. Bye-bye.